form. So I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting at 434 on May 6, 2024. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to the last uh, Superintendent Student Advisory Council meeting of the year. Um, I see a lot of new faces, so I would just like to welcome you all to this meeting, and I hope that you all enjoy um, what we have in store for you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start with our roll call. Olivia, if you want to take the roll. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Deja Mitchell. Can they hear me? Sorry. Deja Mitchell. Virtually. Is she there? No. no. no? Okay. No, Connor Upson. Here. Cameron Coe. Here. Samuel Matthew. I don't see him. No. Okay. He's not here. Johan Gordon. He's not here. Okay. Christopher Thomas. Here. Karina Balcaron, here. Francisco Sandoval. Catherine McKillum. Okay. Dariana Meja Cruz. Okay. Kelly Meja Solares. She's online. Online? She's okay. on her way too. And she's on her way. So. Okay. So should I put in person? Yeah. Okay. Delilah Lenin. Hi, guys, yeah, I'm here. Virtual. Okay. Gabriella Burke. Here. Nathan Vert Vertez. Here. Carla Gonzalez. Here. And, yep. And Samuel Richards. Here. Okay, perfect. All right, so we've taken the roll, so we're going to go ahead and move on to public comment. Um, is there anyone that would like to make a public comment? Okay, seeing that there is no one, we're going to go ahead and move on um, through our agenda. Uh, we're going to have the opening comments from our superintendent, Mr. Burke. Oh, thanks, Mr. Thompson. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, well, this is our last meeting of the school year. I was just curious, how many of you are seniors and graduating uh, in the next couple of weeks? Wow. Pretty good group of us. Well, hey, we really appreciate your service, and we're going to miss you next year, but we know you're going off to bigger and better things, and we'll welcome in some new folks to uh, to, to fill your shoes. Um, I see we're, we're dressed up today. We got either our shirts on or where we're heading off to school. Yeah. Miss Burke, you're going to FSU? That's very fitting. It looks like. Well, there's somebody who's going to you out. <laughs> I saw There's somebody going to UF. Yeah, I thought I saw mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, that's great. You're well presented. Go knows. Go everybody. I'm I'm a big supporter. Of, I have three kids. They went to all different schools, so we got to cover between the Gators and the Knowles and the FAU Alice. You can't go wrong. But uh, any of do any of you have to give a speech at your ceremony commencement ceremony? I do for president. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Samuel, you too. What? Are you ready? Did you get your speeches ready? Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I like had to like write the whole thing and have it finalized by last week. All I get to do is say congratulations to you now your house. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty good gig. Hey, that's an important job. <laughs> that's important. I wish I had to do that and not give a speech. <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. The uh I've been working on my speech, and I was going to bounce a couple things off you guys to see, because I'm not sure if you would Have you heard, does anybody know what it means if I say no cap? Like, does that, right? So that means, so, so it means. Please like, do it. Please. Like the truth, I'll pay right? you $5. Like, okay. Well, now I'm worried. What if I said, like, you guys left no crumbs? So would that does that make sense? Eight and left you ate, crumbs. Ate, yeah, left crumbs. that's how you say it. Eight oh, and eight left no crumbs. crumbs. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, guys, <laughs> um, when you're talking, make sure you turn your mics on and move them close so people online can hear you. Just a side note. And raise your hands as well so we can call on you. But for right now, it's okay. All right. Well, that's really all I had for you today. But the, <laughs> I do want to just tell you, all joking aside, like I really value having this committee. I, I brag about you guys all the time when I'm out 
different, giving different speeches like chambers of commerce or groups of parents or whatever. And, uh, you know, you're an impressive group. You really are. I mean, you, I feel like you're further along in life than I was when I was at your age. Like you're very, I find you'd be very thoughtful and that you care about people beyond yourself. And, uh, yeah, and you're very articulate with your and eloquent with your comments. So appreciate, you know, all the input you've provided. Um, it is helpful. And we do, you know, we're trying to get more and more student voice at the table. When we're making decisions. So each school is working on creating their own kind of advisory committee. And uh, you guys are pioneers. So you got us on a good track here. We're going to keep it going uh, well after you leave us. So Simmons, that's it for me. All right. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to an update on the adoption process by Ms. Shannon Caruso. Oh, is this? Hey, it's on. Yes. Hey, everybody. It's so good to see you all again. And I'm so excited to be here in your presence to see you at the last session. It was ama amazing. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> It was really great to spend some time and to hear your feedback and input on the curriculum process um, back in February. I am excited to say that in all the categories that you looked through, the Rethink Ed was the main choice and pending board approval, um, pending board approval, it will um, be going through. What's really important is that we heard you, we saw you, and we understand how important it was that we had that component of the the, the dis group discussion, the teacher facilitating the, the, the lessons and just that incorporation of being able to share the content and the subject matter. And so as the SLL team works to to do a rollout of this um, curriculum, we are going to be making sure that it's facilitator led and that there are group discussions of the content. So we really appreciate that. Um, we'll say that there may be some, you know, small components where there is some independent work along with it, but it's not going to be click clack moo. It's not just going to be typing and one and done. So we really appreciate your feedback on that and we will keep you all posted as the process continues. Thank you. I just want to jump in and oh. I just want to jump in and add to what you said. We had to actually go back to a couple of publishers and kind of had to re-advertise based on your feedback. So it made a, a huge, like Shannon said, a huge difference, but really appreciate that. So hopefully users, you that are seniors don't see that, but it'll help other kids in the future. So thank you for that. Hello. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ms. Caruso, and thank you, Mr. Oswald. Um, my bad. I skipped the uh, approval of the minutes, so um, if everyone would want to look over the uh, agenda real quick for today, just take a look at it. Oh, the green paper, excuse me, I'm over here looking at the blue. Um, and uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I move to approve the minutes. Uh, is there a second? I also move to approve minutes. All right, uh, Cameron seconds. So the minutes are approved. So we're gonna go ahead and move on um, to the student wellness policy, uh, student input on the student wellness policy by uh, Mr. Bruce Harris. Janina, do you want to present or would you like me to present? Um, no, um, Mr. Harris, you can go ahead and pre present. Okay. Um, there's been a wellness promotion policy since 2006, as required by federal law and state law. And we've had five uh, revisions since then, and they're going through another one right now. This is a policy that's um, owned by the food services. I was the attorney for who did the legal review, and I'm here as the uh, food service people cannot be here tonight. Um, I wanted to let you know uh, you had seen a copy of this previously because they held a workshop for the pu for public input. Um, but we wanted uh, since the policy has not moved forward since then. We want to give you another opportunity to provide input here since they want student input in, into this uh, policy, as well as parents, teachers, and the whole community. And um, if you'd like to discuss this here now, 
you can. There are certain areas that are in the policy. Um, it tells you the 10 areas that it addresses. You may have some other ideas that you want to present. Um, or, uh, or in addition to that, you can also send in comments. And uh, one of these slides pro provides you the email address as well as um, the square where you can fi figure out how to send them in before May 13th because they're trying to wrap it up. However, if you don't have time to do it by then, there's always public comment for board meetings because this would have to go to a board workshop and to public hearings in which you can either appear in person or you can send in written comments. The notices to those meetings will indicate how to do that. So if you'd like to discuss it right now, you're welcome to have discussion among yourselves or you can send it in and you can discuss with other people who just can't discuss with other people in this on this committee because of sunshine issues. But you can discuss with parents, you can send it to parents, you can send it to other students, you can send it to teachers if they want to give input. Um, so I would open it up now if you want to discuss this here now. So, um, yes, um Mr. Harris, so we're going to give you an opportunity. I know I sent the wellness policy to you. We're going to give you an opportunity to read the wellness policy um, amongst yourself and consider the question, considering the current wellness policy for the Palm Beach County School District, what additional resources or programs could be implemented to better support the social, emotional well-being of students? Um, you can jot down ideas on the copy that I gave you, and then we're going to discuss, elaborate, and build upon each other's ideas in this room. You can't discuss it outside of the room um, with each other because of Sunshine Law, but you can discuss it in this room. And then you can use the QR code to provide feedback before May 13th, or you can email your feedback. But I'm going to give you about um, five minutes to kind of go peruse the wellness policy and think about ideas and thoughts that you can share with the group. And if you didn't have time to look at the policy, just so if you look on the bottom of the first page, there's 10 components that are covered within mm -hmm. this wellness policy. So you can see, and then it, the rest of the policy is broken down into those particular areas from physical education, physical activity was the section one, section two, nutrition, environment, services, section three, counseling, et cetera. So you can see how that's organized. Sorry, I didn't know. That's good. So an idea is to think about one of the 10 tenants, at, I mean, the nine tenants at the bottom, and maybe go to one of those tenants and look that over that interests you.
Um, also, make sure you turn your um, Chromebooks on and log in just in case they take a few minutes to, you know, wind up. All right, so we're going to go ahead and call for comments and discussion questions. Um, we're going to go ahead and talk about uh, the, the things that we have uh, concerning this uh, topic. So are there any comments, discussion questions, any things that we wanted to bring up uh, concerning this? Or Just remember, guys, raise your hands. Um, it's a part of the sunshine uh, laws that we raise our hands and you're called upon to um, answer. So uh, go ahead, Connor. Um, I just... Is this still a thing being practiced in all the schools, or are we trying to bring it back into the school system? It still occurs within the, the school, um, but we make adjustments each year to the policy to try to strengthen it or make it better based on feedback. We would say I have a follow-up question. I have a follow-up question. Um, what happens if the school doesn't follow these guidelines? Well, there's a lot of areas that are covered in here, so they could be incorporated in certain classes along the K-12 continuum, not necessarily all in a particular school. Does that makes sense? But if you have feedback or concerns about a certain area or that you'd like to see more of, that would be good to give that. All right, uh, Francisco, you have a question. So it says that the district offers youth mental health first aid training as a as a resource to staff to develop skills to help students um, who may be experiencing a mental health or addiction challenge. Do all teachers and staff know this at all schools, or is it just? Yes, currently we're at about ninety percent of all of our employees that are trained in youth mental health first aid. So the majority of teachers at all your schools have been trained. Thank you. Yeah, unless they're newer. All right, do we have any more questions, comments, concerns concerning uh, this? Feedback? Feedback. Like I, like I indicated before, if you want to think about it or share it with your parents or share it with other students who are not part of this committee, um, please do so, and you have an opportunity till May 13th to send to this particular um, email address or otherwise when it goes before the board, uh, you're allowed to provide public comment either verbally or in writing to the board office. And uh, you may have, you know, those comments will be considered. Mr. Chairman. Uh, point of personal privilege. Mr. Bruce Harris is uh, one of our senior attorneys. He's had a stellar career with the school district and he's going to be retiring uh, in just a couple of weeks. So the committee would join me in just wishing him well and a big round of applause for Mr. Bruce Harris on a great career. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. I, I don't know if you recall, I spoke at your first meeting and discussed sunshine and a little bit about Robert's rules. Oh yeah, they're all nodding in the affirmative. They remember every <laughs> everything you said, Bruce. <laughs> so you're the one that tries to keep them out of getting in trouble. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Harris. Thank you. Have a great night. All right, so uh, if that's all said and done, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next um, point in our agenda. So right now we are going to have a presentation um, by Mr. Joseph Sanchez um, concerning uh, school start time. So uh, Mr. Joseph, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Good evening, everyone. I'm Joseph Sanchez. I'm the Chief Operating Officer here with the School District, and I'm joined by two of our colleagues. I'll let them introduce themselves as well. I'm Tasha Peart, and I'm a manager in the COO's office. I'm James Campbell, director in the COO office. All right. Do Dr. Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, Dr. Campbell just he joined us uh, from Seminole Ridge High School. He's a former principal over there. A couple other places as well. <laughs> um, so I want to talk to you guys about the uh, House Bill uh, 733. Um, so this is the, we're going to cover the, these issues. So we're going to do a little overview, some of the different parameters that we're working through, some comparisons, some of the different stop, start time options that we start looking at. Um, we'll look at a couple of different school districts and we'll look at options that we have for ourselves. Some of the objections that, that I've gathered or we've gathered as a team and then the next steps that we're going to be taking to move forward. So first of all, House Bill 733, which was passed, not this past session, but the previous session in 2023 uh, by, the, the, by the legislature, requires that by uh, July 1st of 2026 that, um, that middle schools can't start any earlier than 8 o'clock and high schools cannot start any earlier than 8.30. Um, this require, this, the law also requires that we inform the stakeholders about the impacts of sleep deprivation on health, safety, and academics, inform them about the benefits of later start times, and also discuss different strategies for implementing later start times. So some of the parameters that we're dealing with, uh, first of all, most of our bus routes um, take care of three, uh, take care of all three levels. They go to high school, then they go to elementary school, and then they go to middle school. Then it's a little bit different order in the afternoon. There's some exceptions to that. Um, if any of you guys are in choice programs, you may be in a different route. It's, they don't cover three routes necessarily, but most of our buses carry, uh, take care of three different tiers. The elementary schools, they're generally around just around just over six hours. The school day is just over six hours. In most of those routes, on average, about 45 minutes, they range both in the morning and the afternoon. Middle schools are about six and a half hour long school day. And they, they'll route, those routes take about 70 minutes in the morning and the afternoon. And then high schools are between seven and seven and a half hours or so. Um, and those routes take about 65 minutes. Again, this is different from choice. This is just a typical routes. Um, on the right, you see that our bus drivers ha have an eight hour work day. Um, that's important to them. They, they need to earn a living. And then um, they have, on a, in the mornings, they do a pre-check on a bus for about 15 minutes. And in the afternoons, they do another pre, they do a post trip check uh, again, just to make sure nobody's left on the bus, you know, things like that. Again, it's all about safety, make sure the brakes are working, everything is good like that. Um, the all morning drop offs, we need to factor in, um, give students enough time for breakfast if they want to have breakfast. And then at the high schools, we just were implementing the metal detectors, so we have to allow enough time for students to get to the metal detectors and get to the, get to the, the uh, get to the metal detector, have breakfast, and then get to class. And then for our high schools, um, one of the things, high schools have a lot more, have flexibility with lunches. Some of them have one lunch period, some have two lunch periods, some have three lunch periods. Um, we want to make sure there's enough time for students to sit down and have lunch. So we don't want to squeeze the day down too, too far. So we looked at some other school, some other school districts. Um, the first three of them are actually already implementing those, those times that they have there. And Martin County is going to be introducing their, their new schedule next year to comply with the law. Um, you see that Hillsborough is about the, the size of the number of students. So Hillsborough is about the same number of students that we are. They're around 220. We're around 190 or so. Um, geographically, Hillsborough is a lot smaller than we are. They're about uh, um, 1,051 square miles. We're almost 2,000 square miles. And that makes a big difference because the more compact you are, the easier it is to, to get your buses around. So they have a little bit uh, easier time of doing that. But you can see the districts, the four districts who have determined their times for next year or have already have them in place, they're all going element, elementary, then high, and then middle. That's how they work things out. And you can see that the high schools don't start before 830, and the middle schools typically start later by, by, by 9, 9, about 930 or so. Down on the bottom, you see what Palm Beach County is, where we are today. We start at 30, and then elementary at 8, and then middle schools um, after that. Thanks. So th now I'm going to go through the three different options that we've come with. And we, we have a, uh, a work group, similar to you guys, we have a work group of about uh, 20 different departments, 13 uh, principals who will sit on that, that work group who have help, who've helped us consider different options and consider all the different challenges that we're going to have with implementing um, this law. So this first option with elementary schools first um, it starts with elementary starting at 7.30 in the morning and finishing up at 1.35. And then you see parentheses for each one of those. You'll see a drop-off time. That's, again, to take into consideration 
given time for breakfast and given time for um, for getting through the metal detector. So you see the drop off times a little bit earlier. And sometimes that drop off time is is also determined based upon how much time they need to complete the routes to get to the next schools. So that's a factor in there as well. So you have elementary starting at 7.30 to 1.35, high school right after that at 8.45 to uh, 3.45, and then middle schools at 10.15 to 4.50. So like I said, this is most similar to Hillsborough County. Um, one of the major concerns this raised is that um, the smallest children, the elementary students, would be picked up first. And in the wintertime, it's dark in the mornings. Um, so we're concerned about having younger students waiting for buses or making their way to, way to school in the dark. Um, there's also some opportunity, there's some concerns about overtime for bus drivers because there's a bigger gap in the, in the middle of the day for the bus drivers. Our bus drivers work, they work the mornings, then they, they're off midday, and, and then they work in the afternoons. Um, so that gap is longer, and then um, that's, that's one of the concerns that we have as well. And then, I'm sorry, just, just to finish up. Yeah. And then the late start for um, late start and end for middle school. So you see they starting at 1015 and finishing at, at 450. Um, there's an impact on middle school sports. Um, we do not have lights on our on our middle school field. So that's going to be an, an issue. Um, activity buses are pretty late. And then uh, middle school staff, middle schools are some of the hardest schools to staff already. Um, but middle schools that have, uh, you know, teachers that have kids in elementary school, they're going to have challenges um, doing that. So we're going to have a, have a, a even tougher um, ch challenge staffing our, our middle schools right now. So uh, with the, this second option is the middle school first. And remember, the law says that middle schools cannot start any earlier than 8 o'clock. So this option puts middle schools at exactly 8 o'clock in the morning. And we could drop them off a little bit earlier. Um, then followed up by, by high school starting at 9.15 through 4.35. And then elementary schools um, starting at 9.45 through 5.50. So a big concern with this one is morning care for, for elementary schools. One of our bigger challenges also right now as a district is having enough before care and after care workers. We, there's just not enough people out there who want those jobs right now. And that's a challenge. After school care for middle school. There's not not many of our middle schools do not have after school programs right now. Um, high school needs to end at 4, 435. This is one of those cases where we so the law says that high schools can start as early as 830, but in this one you see we pulled it back to 915, and that's because we need that time in order to drop off those to, to, to pick up the kids from elementary school at, at 350 drop them off, and then get those buses to the high schools so they could pick those kids up and, 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 and get them home. If we left it, if we try to make that 830, then we wouldn't have enough time to, to pick up the, the kids in the afternoon for the high school. So that kind of impacts that one. There's definitely the fourth bullet would impact. I'm sure you guys are the brightest of the bright. It impacts a lot of dual enrollment kids. And it's going to impact kids who have a volunteer or after work, or after, that work after, after school. Um, kids who pick up their younger siblings, uh, so it's a big issue for that. Then our high school sports are going to be impacted because we have to, um, kids may have to leave, students may have to leave school early in order to, to make it to their their, um, their competitions on time. And we don't want students to be missing out on um, academics in order to make the athletics. Then the third option starts with the high schools first. Again, the law says high schools can't start before 8.30. So we'll drop the kids, high school kids off at 8 o'clock, um, start school at 8.30. Um, then we get to the elementary starting at 9 o'clock, and then the middle schools starting at, at 10.20. So this is the same order as all our current bus routes right now. So this is you know, basically moving all our routes back an hour or so. Um, just about. So it's, it's the easiest to implement because we're just moving it back an hour, but it's also very complicated for some other reasons. Um, so we again, the high school hours are impacted by the drop off time for the, um, at the end of the day for, uh, for elementary schools. And then we have a late start and end for middle schools. Again, middle schools are finishing right around rush hour. Um, so that's a big challenge. Morning care. Um, the one thing about, about special, about, the. Morning care in particular is that you, you, for students who have um, IEPs or you know, students who are, have special needs, we have to make sure that they're still getting, they're being serviced by people who will have the skills to service them. So it's not, you can't just pick up any 
college kid to watch over kids that that have um that have special needs. We have to make sure that they get in the care that they need. And then um, the, a number of similar concerns to the first one, first option as well. All right. So um, as I mentioned, there was a bunch of ob objections that we received from various stakeholders about the different options. And, and uh, so some of the things that we that we've heard is that uh, the state should allow us to have the, some flexibility. We are the school district. Palm Beach County is still a high performing school district. Um, we are doing certain things right that, that makes us a high performing school district. So um, we, we know what we're doing. So let's give us that flexibility so we continue to do what we're doing. Second one is school districts have different programs. Um, like our, many of our high schools have seven period days. We have choice programs. Not all school districts offer the things that we offer here in Palm Beach County. So it may be easier for somebody else to do um, to meet the law than it is for us because we, we offer such a variety of, our, of variety of programs. Third bullet is school districts have different challenges in terms of size of the counties. As I mentioned, we're different than, than Hillsborough, we're different than Martin County, we're different than different places. So it takes us, it takes our buses to go around. Um, you guys have seen the congestion build, <laughs> even in your short 18, 17, 18 years, you see there's a lot more traffic on the roads these days than, um, than, than it was a few years ago. So we also believe local communities should have, be able to decide for themselves, local control. And then we believe parents and, and students should have options. Uh, we already have a couple of schools that have later start times. Forest Hill High School, Boca High, they already start at 8.30. We have some other schools that start um, later as well. Give, give parents and students a choice rather than saying you mandating that you can't start any earlier than this. So that's, that's what we believe. Next up. So um, this is the timeline that we have. First of all, we want to make sure we give you guys an opportunity to provide some input as well. So there you see a QR code, which has a very, leads you to a very short um, two minute survey. If you want to give your input, it's some multiple choice questions, but also give you a chance to write things in. So I appreciate you do that. Next month, we're going to be going before the school board to present our recommendations to them. Um, then in, when we come back in the fall, we're actually starting in, in the summer through the fall, we're going to be doing stakeholder input. Um, you guys are part of that stakeholder input. Um, maybe I see you are really graduating, moving on, but I want to make sure we get the community and others to, to provide their input. We're going to have some, we have a survey that's going to be available, and we're also going to have uh, forums throughout forums throughout the um, throughout the county. In November, October, November, we're going to be having a workshop with our board to talk about what our priorities are to bring back to the state legislature, which meets in the um, beginning of 2025 and let them know what's important to us. And then uh, January through March of next year, we're gonna incorporate all that input that we got from the community, from the stakeholders. And then by um, April of 2025, we, we want the board to vote on which option they wanna go with. And then we're gonna spend the next 14 months from May 25 to August 26, communicating the plan, making sure we prepare, get the routes together, preliminary routes because routes change every year somewhat. Um, let you know adapt to our extended learning early if we have uh, early child care you know um, sports all those things need to make some adjustments allow for transfers and when we when we if we have to change the schedules we have to let employees have an opportunity to change schools if they want to um if we make some impact there could be an impact on choice transportation and courtesy riders and we have to give those parents and those students an opportunity to appeal those changes so they can say, you know, don't change this because this is how this negatively affects us. We know that absenteeism is, absenteeism is an issue and we want to, we don't want to make things worse by creating schedules and calendars that are going to make things harder for, for kids to get to school. And then um, by August 2026, we're going to meet the law. If the law is still in place and we'll, we'll, be, in, we'll be ready to go. But the key for this slide here really is, is we want to get your input. We want to hear from you guys. Um, we want to know what's important to you. I know that you represent high schools <laughs> primarily, but I know that you, you probably have younger siblings, but you also speak for, for other students as well. So your input is, is very valuable to us. So with that, uh, we're ready to take any questions, Mr. Chair. Um, I actually have my own question. Sure. <laughs> so... 
concerning. Uh, well, thank you for uh, giving us this presentation. It's actually very informational. Um, concerning times, I feel, well, this is more of a comment. I don't know if you, are you open to taking comments? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Please, yeah. So, so um, as a high schooler, um, I'm involved. I'm in the marching band. We just came from Atlanta. I'm very tired right now. <laughs> I, you can probably hear it in my voice. But being um, very involved, I'm staying after school daily. And for high schoolers, moving the start time back up a lot, how does moving, let's say we move the high school start time to nine o'clock. That pushes back um, our times for after school activities and events because normally high schoolers have more after school uh, and then maybe middle school and elementary. So if you were to push back high school by a lot, then how would that affect things like the activity bus? How would that affect things like when am I getting home after band practice or football practice? So that's just the way I'm thinking about it. How does that play a role in everything after school as well and not just you know, dealing with the morning, getting to school, and then leaving. What about those kids that are actually involved as well? Absolutely. That, that's that's <clears throat> a major, major concern is how does that impact kids that do all that stuff? Because you're right, if it's, 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 it's going to be hard. <laughs> it's going to be harder for you guys to, to participate in all those things that you participate in now because mm -hmm. it basically puts it back later. They, they, the legislature voted for this because they believe that you would get more sleep and you'd be more rested in the morning. I don't know if that's a true, if that's true or not. Um, Cause we, we have, like I said, we have two high schools that, that have a later start time. And I, when I hear from their principals, they tell me that the kids just stay up later, you know, but you know, I, I want to hear from you guys. But. And uh, thank you for that comment. And uh, just to piggyback off of what Mr. Sanchez said, the, the counties that are doing this, like Hillsboro, mm -hmm. um, you know, from what we understand, they don't offer as much. as much as we do here in Palm Beach County for our students. Mm -hmm. So, yes, that is a valid concern about extracurriculars, which are very important um, to you guys. And sometimes for some students, that's what drives you, you know, to come here is being a part of those activities. So um, we, we thank you for that because we're, that's what we're here for, to hear how this makes you feel and how you feel that your uh, classmates will feel about this. Mm -hmm. I turned it off, sorry. So we're gonna go ahead and call on Delilah, I think that is. I can't see from here. Yeah, Delilah. Okay, Delilah, you have a comment or a question? Hi guys, can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, I just kind of wanted to build off of what you said because that was honestly one of the first things that I thought of too, that I'm so involved that I feel like I right now feel like I don't have enough hours in the day to get everything done because as a student, not only am I worried about my academics and study time and homework and stuff, but also getting my sports done, my job, everything like that. And I know that if I had like an extra hour to wake up, that wouldn't be helping me with sleep at all. If, if anything, that would be like making me stay up later because now I'm getting home from work later and I have homework to finish that's going to be finished even later. And honestly, I, I think about like the real world, all jobs start around like six, seven early. So I don't understand why we'd be like enabling students to get adjusted and used to like later start times when in the real world, that's not how it works. And then also um, like, I understand like I'm one of the like few students who are very involved in school and that would have like those problems. But a lot of students that I know work and I think that like, by starting it later, we would be getting to like work later, which means we'd be working later, but also like cutting it down on our hours and an hour a day is a lot of money.